Good morning, beloved. It's another great day in the aftermath of the downfall of Babylon. It's not the downfall, of course, that you see in Revelation 18, where all commerce stops and God opens up a can of whoop-ass and basically says, Rejoice, all of you, because the Lord avenges, because you all have been paying the price of doing the dying. You've been doing the, the dying. You've been doing the, been persecuted. You know, throughout the ages, you, your type, you pure hearts, you sold out to Jesus for real that were booted from your churches because you were the real thing, <laughs> which they can't afford to have there. And you know that. Well, I remember when my brother, who was just like you all, he was trying to help out at a church called St. James and San Diego, I guess. It was a Protestant. I think it was a uh, Episcopal church. I- I'm not sure, really. But uh, they they told him not to come back. He was there for Bible study. And he was going to the services and felt that he needed the Lord. He needed something in his life. And then he died, you know, not too long, well, a few years after that, but I mean in the same town where he was rejected because he was a, uh, really, I mean, he was kind of, I guess maybe semi-retarded, you you know, um, handicapped in that way, but he was a pure heart, you know, and... But because he was different, you know, he was told to go away. But he was as much a child of God as more so because he was a pure heart. In other words, if yes is yes and no is no, a kid asks him to borrow a quarter. He says he wants to make a phone call. We really wants it for, you know, back in those days, a quarter would buy you a, a Twinkie. So what happens is he goes, this is the kind of person he was. He goes and he puts the quarter in the phone and hands the the kid the receiver, says, okay, make your phone call. And, of course, that wasn't what it was about. You see, it was just that sort of thing. Um, You know, that's just the kind of guy he was, which, of course, made it impossible for the real deal, you know, the what they call real, to get going. Because he was in the way, because he could only see, like, yes and no. He couldn't... He um, was incapable of like this nod wink thing because he was a pure heart and they basically killed him. The church rejection I think the church rejection more so than uh, anything else kind of just pushed him over the edge. So in a sense, you know, maybe not only them that aided in his death, but I mean, in a sense, the church was like a support mechanism that wasn't there when he needed it. And, uh, you know, people that are different when you're young, you know, they they, uh, frighten the other kids or whatever. And usually the, 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 the response this elicits is the kids are mean, and go on the attack, and then the, the church can't protect that, so they say, you, you need to leave because they're attacking you. You need to leave because they're attacking you. I can't stop them from attacking you, so you need to leave. And of course, the day that church did that, in the prophetic realm, which we deal with, the day they did that, they 
destroyed themselves as in the business of delivering souls, they damned themselves. And I think my brother was really, in a sense, the test for them, and they failed. So when I finally saw the church um, uh, culture, I immediately got sick to my stomach. I mean, I'd been in, in uh, uh, church when I was uh, in the Episcopal church when I was uh, going to Sunday school. And, you know, I... I suppose I did a well, but I mainly it was just like in going to chapel because there was a, a school I went to and there you had to go to chapel every week. And at that time I was really kind of a naughty kid. I just really, you know, was rebellious and, you know, acted up in it and you know, made fun of it. And, you know, not, not in a good way, in a bad way, you know, in a way that you know, the, you see a lot of people doing today. I was guilty of thinking it was fake. And I didn't really understand the, the need for it. I'd see people in there praying, and I thought, it was my opinion that they were, um, that they were uh, faking it, trying to look good to other people, trying to look so devout and everything. I often wondered what happened to those people. I, I, I didn't believe it. You know, it's like it was a form of religion. Uh, you know, that scripture, you know, a form of religion, but denying the very power of God. And so I had a very tainted view of it early on because I thought it was fake. And then later when I went um, after the Lord took me up, you know, and I had the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that, and I couldn't wait to go share that only to find a bunch of dour faces not really wanting to embrace that testimony but wanting to indoctrinate me into the culture before I would be allowed to speak testimony. So when I wanted to share with them, I was told to shut the F up and hang around and eventually I would be ready to speak. I said, well, I've been baptized. Oh, no, you have to get baptized here. And then eventually you can give your testimony once we check you out. Once we see if you're going to play ball. I said, well then, this just seems like other institutions that have little cliques and things that, you know, they want you to conform to and jump through these hoops in order to, say, get a degree in college or get in the right, you know, club or whatever it is. And so I felt... Again, but then there was a dark side to this in that they were hostile and even life-threatening and in several occasions and even setting up scenarios to, to either frame me or do something and, and gang-stalking and all that was going on. And I'm like, wow, can you believe this? And I, I had to consult with a friend who verified, uh, you better stay out of there. And I was like, okay, well, then they must be damned. So I went to another one, Trish and I, and um, we saw the same thing. One day we put down Lucifer. We said, you know, something about, you know, Satan already lost. And then this group of people in this one church called, I'll never forget this, in his presence, and they were sitting around the table. It's like the, there was a there was the sanctuary, then there was a doorway, and then there was like a little bookstore and a, a kind of a coffee bar type of thing. And they were sitting around the table, and you know, and then they stared at us for saying that, and they couldn't believe we just blurted that out. But it was just like Holy Spirit led to blurt that out, and then, then they defended Lucifer, defended Satan, saying, "Well, he is in the second heaven, you know." like that merit, some kind of respect. So at that point we knew that they worshipped openly Satan in the form of Jesus, and that was the actual structure of the church. So then we went to another one, the church of John MacArthur, 
called Grace Church in um, <clears throat> in the valley, Sun Valley, valley, part of the valley. And basically, they did the same thing. So we went to another one um, in L.A. called Rocky Peak, and they did the exact same thing. And so, and then there were num- numerous others that they did the exact same thing. So they all worship Satan as their provider and provision and part of their club. And all were hostile to the point of violence with anyone that would resist that becoming possessed, becoming demon-possessed. Now, that's my experience. I, I don't know about other people. I know Trish and I, you know, I could bounce it off her because she went through the same thing. And, and then other people I knew, um, you know, verifying it. And I'm like, but I don't understand. How is it that the church can openly worship Satan or be so blatant about it off the cuff when you're not in their magic ritual time? So what is, what is it that they, they are teaching or what are they doing? And the answer is they're trying to get control of your mind and get you possessed with the same spirit. So it's the same satanic ritual abuse um, that we found elsewhere that we only thought would be, say, in Hollywood or in, you know, in ba- the op- overtly Babylonian pagan kind of anti-God areas. Uh, entertainment industry, you know, music industry. We thought, okay, you know, but to see the exact same thing. And then and then there was another one, uh, Hollywood Presbyterian, where all the actors would go. And it was the same thing there as well. And that was in Hollywood. Um, yeah, so, you know, so interesting. Um this made us feel like we had just arrived here from another planet. And we couldn't really, you know, understand the question, you know, kept repeating, why would they, you know, it's not wink on Satan, but I mean, you know, then they'd have their rituals and stuff. So they, and then they try to blackmail you or frame you or get you into a compromised position, get you to confess something so that they'd have something on you that unless you conform to that, then they they could get you in trouble. So they were actually making that move, which we detected right off the bat and said, uh, yep, and then, and then had to back off and leave. But we saw that going on, and I was like... So they would actually do criminal acts of blackmail and death threats in order to get you to be a member of the church that would comply due to fear that, that the secret you had, whatever it would be, would be then released or, uh, you know, if you didn't behave. And so at this point, and after the tour, because I'm in touch with the Father the whole time, praying and saying, Lord, what's this? Lord, what's that? You know, the whole time this open dialogue is going. And it was like he wanted to show me the state of the church in America. And I saw it. And for 10, 12 years, I've been basically preaching about um, this issue and that God would, you know, leading us to today, would, that God would destroy, um, you know, that, that this is the, basically the Christian church is a thin veneer over the Babylonian church because, you know, if this is the heart of Babylon... Which I didn't want to believe, you know. I mean, I kind of, I knew it then, and then I kind of tried to give America another chance. But, I mean, Babylon is Babylon, and I guess the lesson here is it is Babylon, and it's not going to change. And it is the heart and center of commerce throughout the world, which would make it the great horror Babylon and mystery Babylon at the same time. So, you know, a lot of people believe, you know, there's a lot of people I know that believe that and believed there was no hope for America anyway, even years and years ago because, you know, the, the, the pact with Satan is sealed in the architecture and revealed in the architecture of Washington, D.C. It's set in stone, in other words. And so you can see very clearly from that 
that with the reflecting pool and the obelisk, which is, which is used in rituals to contact spirits from the other realm or to have an access. And then on top of that, during that sort of education of Z, I also saw into the other world, which we talked about yesterday. They have another place they go to, another dimension. And uh, they've talked, there's been songs about it, about going to that dimension. And I suppose it's just for, you know, rituals and sex. And there's a, there's a hidden thing. So when they're doing their rituals and their things, they're hidden from view. You know, all of this stays hidden, including this other world that they can go to. I wanted to pray with somebody because he was troubled. He was going to a Calvary chapel. He said, I can't pray with you because they will hear me and then attack me. So then I knew there was a mind link between them all so that if anyone tried to step out of line, there was already, you know, and that was explained later by Jonathan Clack as being the all-seeing eye in people. And so they would, you know, it would jump from one person to another who would then manifest over here. Another guy would manifest over there, seemingly unrelated, but it would be a coordinated attack because that thing is in all people from the genetic manipulation that occurred called the fall of man. And that is how they're able to police this whole thing through the all-seeing eye. And um, I saw a thing about uh, Keisha, the, uh, uh, the, the reprobate uh, woman singer in her video and whatnot, that was really blatant, you know, with the all-seeing eye orgies and the, and, the, and the repeating verse that, you know, to die young, die young, die young, die young. And I, I think it was Vigilant Citizen that had, you know, analyzed it. And, you know, I had seen all that when I was a kid because, see, the all-seeing eye and the pyramid and the obelisk and all that kind of architecture is Masonic. So having grown up in a family of high Freemasons, uh, obviously, because you had to be a Freemason if you want to do business in Los Angeles. So that, that was just a fait accompli. That was just, you know, that was the norm. Um, but that kind of architecture and those kinds of things were in that kind of paraphernalia about, you know, all seeing eye and the different things and, and all that. We're, we're all, all around our family. So those kind of things were around and, 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 uh, um, and you know, they practice satanic rituals, satanic ritual abuse, pedophilia, gun running, drug running, war running. Um, political fixes, you know, like, and you have to understand when, as we're coming up to the, to the, uh, now that we're in the aftermath, we can talk about these things, that uh, Barack Obama, when he graduated Punahou School, which is, again, you have to be connected, Illuminati, Masonic, it's one of those schools that is connected in that way to the Illuminati, you know. He was giving the Masonic handshake to the the chancellor or the principal or whatever when he graduated and there's a picture of it on the net that you can see that shows me that you know the reason he's being successful is because the other masons involved in all that in other words they're republicans and democrats are nodding and winking but they're all moving the ball toward this masonic new world order and obama is doing you know uh, uh kind of finished it off but that was always their plan. If you look at Albert Pike's work, you see that the plan was for three world wars. And, the, you know, obviously Israel and the United States were kind of holdouts, but they were owned lock, stock and barrel by Satan because they are Luciferian, i.e. Masonic. And so because that's the stature of, you know, that was laid in with the birth of America and the birth of Israel you know, they feel they have a claim to take it down because they are Masons too. And the Masonic thing goes to secret societies of old and, and they have sects that break off, like, for example, the Pythagorean sect and the, the Socrates sect. And, the, you know, there's various sects, you know, the Knights Templar and, you know, the, the aspects of the, you know, the Jesuits. And the, it goes on and on. Um, a lot of the Catholic Church are, are Masons anyway, and the priests are. So they can't possibly be a priest of Jesus Christ because you have to take an oath in Masonry when you go through these various degrees. Uh, but the ultimate degree after you get to 33 is basically to understand 
what they already understood, because if they were in business or anything else, they already had passed through to the other side to Satan. So they already knew that the, the final degrees were just to, n to confirm what they already knew, which is Satan, you know, Lucifer is the god and there is no other. And they prove it to themselves because they see the, the magic work and they see the powers work. And they, they don't see, God's very subtle, sublime. You don't, he, he's moving all this, but you don't see it because it's, it's just because it's, it's so much in your face that you can't see the forest for the trees. So they don't understand it. All they see is they do a ritual over here and then boom, over there they get a result. They do this ritual over here and boom, there's Hurricane Sandy, you know, ready to do. Something happens over here, another brother Mason comes up, Chris Christie, you know, saves Obama and Obama, you know, it's, and then they act like they had nothing to do with it and the rest of it's theater, but they're all in the same club. So they don't, that's, that's what I mean, no one will oppose this man because they believe that, you know, he has, he's something in their prophetic, um, you know, which we'll never know because those higher prophecies, there's a lot of stuff that's sealed up in the Masonic and other related secret societies. But it, it um, they very much, you know, believe in, in, in kind of like a scriptural interpretation of certain things, but then they, then they have extra things that uh, they feel will, will go beyond what the Bible is. I mean, they actually feel they can beat God because, again, Satan has the grip of all institutions on earth and all the people who, uh, you know, the, the Susan Rices and the, you know, the women and the men are all part of the thing, whether they're black or white or Chinese or Korean or, you know, it doesn't really matter. If they're in, they're in. And then they all act like there's two sides, Coke and Pepsi, and they argue across the aisle and this and that. And they, 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 they oh, God, they don't want to hurt anybody. They don't want to hurt, but then they hurt everybody. But the goal is always the same, and it's to collapse this system through war, poverty, etc., which they've always done. But then to build this empire in this global slave empire of tyranny, which is, is the, the, the elites, the ones who are serving that beast, and doing a good job now, they believe they're going to have a good position after the fall of, 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 of Babylon. They believe they will erect their super kingdom, and they will all have a position, whereas the people who resist or who don't know the unwashed masses will either be slaves or extinct through mass killing which is going to be, you know, a mass bloodbath ritual, you know, possibly nukes or whatever, in order to be the ultimate sacrifice to their God. So that would ensure, because the more of the sacrifice you have, the more... That's why um, Obama and others will fight for partial birth abortion. But you'll see that the Republican Party will say we're against it, but they'll never do anything about it. Because both sides and all sides realize that you have to have sacrifice to Satan, which partial birth is because it's a living whole being with a soul and kill it. Well, they're all with a soul at any, 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 any part along the, uh, the track, but they're killing a live, you know, the most innocent of human beings. And it's, and it's like a factory, but it's basically a way to do human sacrifice without, you know, and ritual. And they learn to do this through events that you see that the world is the temple now and the sacrifices are done in the midst of people, say like JFK or something, um, you know, you you know, you see hits airplanes going down. These are actually rituals that are going on, and um, you know, all for the purpose of bringing this God to Earth and these beings to Earth and having them rule with their rod of iron. And these people have magnified positions and possibly apotheosis, you know, be made into eternal beings and gods in this realm that is devoid of Yahweh, devoid of God, which a lot of them are convinced is a myth, but some of the more wise ones are actually, you know, afraid that, that they're wrong and that this other God that's so subtle and sublime and doesn't appear to be doing anything, he's still there. Otherwise, they would have not had a struggle with their, their, what they want to do. They would have easily had their new world order hundreds and thousands of years ago. So they're aware that there's something there, but they're not sure exactly what it is. Some of the wiser ones know what it is and know it's a losing battle, but they want to do it anyway. You know, the idea being that the, the, the last thing they're ever going to want is um, um, 
the, the, they feel they're, they, they, they don't want to go with Jesus. They don't want what that is all about. They don't want it. And part of becoming a 33-degree Mason is the formal second death rejection of God as in other words, there's there's the point of no return, you know, taking an oath to go to hell, if you will, is a big part of that. And and I I've, I've always said, you know, that that oath is meaningless. You can still be redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ at any time. You can because Satan has does not have the power to even offer that. But there are people that go to that to that point. But what that means is not the oath you take publicly. But it's something that happens within a person that makes them twice dead. And there's just nothing there to be revived. They are fit extensions for the fallen angels, demons, the, the, the pantheon of spirits. And they are, they are doing what they were made to do and not resisting. But there's no longer someone in there or a living soul there to be redeemed. And that's really the way I like in a twice death experience. There's nothing actually left there. Where they went, nobody knows. But how many people say, well, they had this person, then they changed, and then it's like they're dead inside. Their eyes are dead, and they, they, they are animated when those spirits take over, and then they jump around and move around. But, then, but that's the only time they do. There's a lot of people in higher, you know, in positions of power and authority who are these kinds of people, and that's why they all move in unison. They have a hive mind to mentality with the media, the government, and they all kind of play this line. And it doesn't matter what media you listen to. They're all completely controlled. And that's why you see, you know, similar stories. Even if you had, um, you know, even if you had, uh, oh, you know, coordinated news producers who are trying to do something different than the other news networks, but they don't do it. And then the politicians are all also tightly controlled. Because in Babylon, I mean, you had Ron Paul giving his farewell speech and basically stated the same thing that we've all, you know, when God speaks, everyone knows it. We all speak now with one voice. Yes, this thing's over. I mean, he was kind of warning, but I mean, the, the gist of it is it's over. You know, if there's no change, it's, it's, it's done. Stick a fork in it. For me, it's already over. Stick a, the fork's been stuck in it, and it it's it it's like a timetable, you know, put into place, or I'm sorry, a clock that or an hourglass that's just gotten started, you know, at this point. For me, I say it's over, but you'll have the definitive over when, when some people say it's over. What they want to see is, you know, the the crumble, you know, the nuking of the United States, which. Uh, if if it's possible for them to do, they'll do it. Um, to 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 get, cause chaos of war and to bring out of that ashes of of uh, of, of destruction, the phoenix rises, and they believe that final rising of the phoenix would be their uh, new world order, if you will, or their new kingdom upon the earth of one world, no borders, and a small population, say about you know no more than a billion people, and you know. You know, the 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 elites would be a the upper percentage of that, say the top ten percent, that would then be served by the bottom, overtly, and at the same time there'd be the interaction and 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 you know the, the these beings, these human beings would be also um, subject to being um, genetically manipulated to be servants and to do their jobs, and and many would be made eunuchs and things like that because uh, in the future they they see a world where if there are beings that need to be made, they'll be made in the laboratory. They're not going to be made, you know, people are not going to be allowed to procreate and have any kind of random, they're going to get control of the genetic code and what kind of beings appear on the earth. And that's, if they get that through, then that's the next frontier that you've seen only in certain cautionary sci-fi movies have, you know, you know um, they have alluded to that. Uh, one was called, uh, I think, Gattaca, Gattaca with uh, Ethan Hawke, and that's an older movie now. But I mean, it had it had the same thing where people were made to do their different jobs genetically. Uh, people were made in test tubes, not you know, because they can do this technology is available. But then then it's the rise of the machines, 
the rise of you know the 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 interaction between the soul and the machine the uh, the attempt to you know and and uh, then then there's the idea of the eradication of human beings altogether or to make them into cyborgs or to try to take their something of them or use them to populate other planets where they would need slaves to do work uh for for because diamonds gold and all those things will still be valuable uh and then and then there's the whole question about you know other worlds and um other planets and other cities that they try to cover up that have been here and there and on the moon and various places, uh, showing that, you know, on Mars, for example, showing that, you know, humans had been there. And, and that's an easy explanation because there are several streams of time going on and we're kind of in the past. There is this whole, the Mars thing is not in the past, in ancient past. The Mars thing is actually in the future appearing to be in the ancient past because the time is like a circle. And it, it, when it comes full circle, that's the end of the time. And the, the idea is to escape that timeline, but because the timeline that we're on ends in the destruction of the world and the return of Christ is the establishment of a new world. <clears throat> and the people that are in Christ, you know, the people that are with God are those that are taken to another dimension, i.e. a new heaven and a new earth. <clears throat> and... So all the things that they want, you know, they would want that new dimension and to live as eternal glorified beings forever and ever. They would want that. But this is the promise of being true to the Lord. And the, 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 the test of it is the persecution. The persecution that's, that's given is kind of like, in a way, a litmus test of proof that there really is something there. There really is a reward there because the persecution is uniform throughout the world and and has a consistency and a likeness to it that shows it's not of man, but of the people that do it not knowing what they do because they have the split in the DNA which causes the thing to be in them to eventually all their behavior is not their own but this thing that they allow in. The people that don't allow that thing in who may have compromised DNA, but don't let that thing in are called overcomers. And then they eventually are rewarded, but it's a natural thing that if you're not, if you're found in the Lamb's Book of Life, this is what will happen to you. Meaning you don't allow the finishing of the genetic manipulation, which is the, which is the resident being that would take over your body and over your mind. That would be, you know, in a sense, this whole world is that the breaking through the other side and being cool means allowing yourself to be possessed by these beings or this collective being that has got everyone else so that you're nod, nod, wink, wink, cool with everybody, and then you get to, you know, compete and do things. But when your life is over, that's it. It's, um, no, I mean, the people that I've known that wanted to be stars and things, they... um, they will ask people if they can sell their soul. They, they can't wait to, they want the most powerful being they can. You know, they'll, they want the best sellout they can do. And, you know, the people that know, most people don't think this far, you know. They just know that if they allow these people to control them and they bow down and they allow themselves to be broken by them and then abused and, and used and, 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 and trauma-based uh, mind control by them, there's a chance they'll get one of those beings in them. And if they do, then they get to be somebody. The rest just get to be servants. But the servants protect the secret. And it's all a big hive and a big web because they all have that all-seeing eye. They're all connected with the hive mind and they can't get out of it. So never lament it. I mean, you know, and the reason they'll persecute you is because if you walk in and you're not connected, they call that being connected, by the way. That's called the hive mind and a psychic link where everybody knows everybody else's business. So you can't have a, right? So if you walk into a place where they are, they would automatically know you're not them because they are already connected and linked. So they would see that right off the bat. Most of the time they'll act like they don't want to tip you off that there's something going on. So they act like nothing's happening, like like try to make you feel it's normal. But they know. So that makes it difficult for some of you who are at that level of awareness to be able to go into different places knowing that they're there. You go into a Walmart, I guarantee they're there, and they start making noises and things. 
you know, they, they do the same ritual everywhere. I've been all over the world. They've been do the same thing. They whistle and they moan and they grunt and they groan and, and <laughs> they make noise, weird noises. And they, and they, 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 they get really like do a feigned thing and they, they start gang stalking them. They might do a little gaslighting, uh, but it's all being, they're like puppets being controlled. And all you got to do is do something funny, like call them puppets or go up and, um, ask them how their uh, how the hive is going or some you know thing like that that will trigger them to fear and then they'll scatter from you but you can't you can't run from them so what you got to do if, I've always felt guilty about that because I didn't but I didn't know what I was dealing I got triggered back to when I was 3 years old 4 years where it scared the heck out of me and I'd run now now that I understand no, I don't run. I take glee. I want to run at them because it's better to run at them than run away from them. It's better to go and trigger them with crazy talk. And it backs them right off. It does. But you have to learn. It's like the playground. If you let them get an, e- an inch, they're gonna, they're gonna, you're going to be uh, put in, in a corner as the bullied kid. You can't, you can't let them have that, you know. You give it. You give it back to them. You whistle. You moan. You make noises. You you do imitate them. That freaks them out when you start imitating them, because they are ubiquitous and they are you know the mass population. God will avenge you on her. Her being Babylon, mystery Babylon is the the mystery is the grip, the iron grip. Um, the mystery of Babylon is it's the world system. That's the mystery of it. And it's a spiritual hierarchy that is regimented, uh, highly technological, and highly controlled. These people have just really become, in a way, machines. And, you know, they can be dangerous. You know, they can put poison in your food if you go into a restaurant. They can, they can do things. You know, they can be, you know, snakes can be dangerous. Playing with rattlesnakes can be dangerous. You know, you don't want to make a point of, it's just that if you're there... And it's going on. You have two choices. You can run away. and go. I'm not saying that's a bad choice. If the Lord tells you to run, you run. You do everything according to the Lord. You know, I mean, I, I had it happen to me in a, a guitar center where they started, you know, and then we just, it really got weird because I wouldn't leave. But the Lord told me, this is going on. Uh-oh. And then, and then I, I was testing out some... Uh, some uh, Roland electronic drums. I, I have a little kit of Rolands here. They're, uh, it's kind of, it's not the most fancy aspect, but it's got the, the mesh pads and it's small, which is what I needed for my studio. So it didn't really take up a lot of room, but I could get, you know, real live drum sounds when I, when I, when I needed on a track. But um, I was testing it out. And then the, one of the, the guy there, he, he recognized me. And this all went back to um, an incident that occurred there. Where I, when I bought a Roland HPD 15 hand drum and an, and a Roland amplifier, I, I still have the amplifier, but I sold the hand drum on uh, on eBay because you know it's just a matter of having room. I just don't have room for have all these little things around, you know, like the guitars I have. They have to go on the on the wall um, outside the uh, the studio itself. Just you know, but they look good. They're like decorations on the wall, you know. It's, it's a musical house. It's going to have musical instruments. But anyway, I had this HPD 15, which, you know, I used to do a lot of crazy effects on. You remember back in the day, I used it to make all kinds of noises. It was a lot of fun, I'll tell you. But it just became, you know, the samples weren't that great or anything. So, uh, But anyway, I, I, when I bought it, there was a guy there that was helping me. and There was a guy there who already knew who I was, and he was... Just like, oh, we don't have it. Oh, no, we're out of stock. And the other guy behind the counter goes, no, you're wrong. We have it right downstairs. Go get it. So he reluctantly goes and gets So I knew there was going to be trouble. But I was evangelizing this guy. I was telling him about the Lord Jesus. And I was telling him to not bow down to Satan anymore, but just, you know, I, I went right into the, you know, into the realm of Satan, Guitar Center, which is sex, drugs, rock and roll, devil horn sign, you know, and started in on this guy. And then, so I guess it was time for, you know, when I went in there before, the guy kept looking and goes, oh, that's him. And then he started playing drums really loud, so I couldn't hear my, what I was doing. So I eventually had to stop. And then I, then I said, oh, well. And I started testing him by saying, uh, oh, so my, uh, my foot pedal and everything won't work with a set of real Rollins, huh? 
oh no, you have to start over again. And it just went like that. Now, I hung in there and, uh, you know, um, they sort of saw me out. It could have gotten, I mean, I felt like it was going to go violent. I felt like, I felt like at one point we were going to get in a fist fight, you know, and for no reason, I don't know him again. It's like this guy behind the counter. I don't know who he is. It's just, he just wanted to start some, some shit. And so I was like ready to take a symbol and throw it at his head, you know, and just use it as a, you know, like a Frisbee at his head. I mean, it was just at that point. But then the Lord would kind of calm me down. He just said, you know, stand down. You know, you, you should just like make your exit. So they got to have their say. I looked at him in the eye and then I eventually made my exit. And they go, yeah, come back anytime. Ha, 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 made it. Ha, ha, make it. Like they thought that would freak me out or something. So I'd always planned to go back there and sit down at the drums and crank it really loud and just start playing. You know, I, don't, I have that on my schedule. If I ever get back to L.A. to that particular store, I, I'll do it. But probably the same people aren't there. And I also had, you know, fantasies of killing the guy as well. You know, I mean, it's just, it, I'm sure they had the same fantasies about me. It's just, you're, you know, we're, it's just like that. Now, was this battle their personal battle against me? No, they don't know me. Remember that. Was it mine against them? No, I don't know them. Remember that. Could it have gone to murder? Yes. Could have. Wouldn't have been reported that way unless it like, you know, if I died, it would be like, you know, I was a psycho and they stopped me. You know, there'd be a cover story. Um, what did the Lord say? The Lord said, no, you don't get violent in these things. You, you, you don't understand. You got him backing you up, but you ask him what to do. He said, uh, stop drumming. Um, this is going on. The battle is on. It's, this is for real. This is not a drill. That's exactly the words I heard in my mind. This is not a drill. This is for real. Those are the words I heard that he told me. So I got ready. And uh, so they didn't get the satisfaction of, like, say, running me off. I left, but I kind of casually left at my own pace. And um, it didn't feel real good. You know, I wanted to do something. I mean, my carnal, you know, it's like, oh, you're choosing me off? Okay, I'll kill you. That's the carnal response. The Lord muted that. And he said, you can't do that because there's, an awful lot of people who don't understand this whole thing, and they do, and they do something, you know, they 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 react badly, or they end up getting killed because they're hanging around when they should be fleeing, and you know they will kill you if they have a, if they if they could have gotten away with it, you know, all things being equal, and you're in the middle of somewhere where there's no witnesses, yeah, they, they could they for no reason they could kill you for no, in other words, they don't know you, you've done nothing to them, they've done nothing to you, but they could just kill you because of the difference. And it's always like that, wherever we go. It's, there's been no change, that kind of thing, there's been no change in that since, I guess, you know, before it would go on as well, but before when it went on, since I was like a teenager, that sort of thing, and people will call that gaslighting, gang stalking, but I've proven to you that it's the spiritual thing that causes it. It's, they weren't organized, but a person who's unaware would think, they were waiting for me. They've been. They someone tipped them off that I was on my way down here. That's what a a, nor, a, a non spiritual person, non Jesus person would think. A nor, who who they would think that it was a setup. It, well, it was a setup because of the all seeing eye. You know, having control over all these people, but it wasn't a setup in the sense that there was a phone call. Because at the end of the day, if you're a targeted individual, I'd say, go to the mirror and say, you know, what's wrong with you that, you know, what's the beef that anyone would have with you? The answer is there is no beef. They don't give a reason. Okay, so you don't know why you're targeted. And I would contend that, be, well, the, it just means to me, you're not part of their network. You're not one of them. So their job is to target you. Are you a gang stalker? No. Are you part of the hive? No. Are you in their club? No, you're just an individual working your way through the world, not really, you know, th giving it much thought. And uh, then you're targeted for no reason. No, you're targeted because you're not them. It's really simple. You're targeted because you are not them. It's not because you voted for the wrong political. I mean, that can happen. People get stalked because they they're the wrong. 
political party the wrong thing in a community, and so they try to muscle you out. But that's a little bit different than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you go somewhere unrelated to where you were before, say to another state or another city, you go in somewhere and the incident like what I just described happens to you. Okay, you know, and then you think someone from that other city tipped them off and they were waiting for me. No, well, they were tipped off, but it's a spiritual thing. And your crime is you're not one of them. Are you ranked in the system? Do you have a rank? Do you have a place and a rank and do you take orders from people? Do you have people that you bow down to and take orders and then go execute the orders? You know, in other words, like a military style hive mind type of thing. Are you in that club? No? Okay, so they're going to turn the microwave on you. They're going to, they're, they will harass you electronic. Listen, I know people that have had the radio busted in the radio frequency, like listening to the radio, and then someone starts talking to them through the radio. And they're not psychotic, but literally as a way to spook them. So they've, that's a form of harassment that there's been for a long time. Um, it just goes back to the same reason my brother was asked to leave that church. He was a pure heart. He wasn't part of their little club. They started teasing him. They couldn't control it. It was a thing that couldn't, wasn't tenable for them. So they told the one person that God sent as a litmus test to them, like, if you kick this one out, you'll be damned. They kicked him out. They're damned. I think the only thing you should do is put graffiti on that church. You know, break their windows. But again, we don't fight in those terms. We, we you know, Ephesians 6, we uh, basically, these are principalities and, 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 and the control mechanisms are above and beyond this dimension. And that controls these people. They don't set out, to, you know, to hurt you. It's just that you're, they get messages of there you are and they all get it at the same time. They all descend on the target. Even though those people, they don't know each other. Like you'll have the guy at Walmart who's, you know, a guy that's a customer, a guy that's a fireman, or what. Different kinds of people can all converge on one target. But it's because they're controlled and coordinated because their souls belong to Satan. It's that simple. Satan or organizes the high tech surveillance and infiltration of bodies. Hence the genetic split that is our DNA that, that basically tethers us to this world into a 3D experience where we're like blindfold and can't see that stuff. They get a blindfold taken off, but they get kind of colored glasses in, in return for the blindfold. So they think they can just pick on the blindfold. That would be you. They can just pick on you the because you don't know what's going on. So they can just kick you around because they just like to bully something. And there's the part of that is in it too, but it's coordinated to drive you. You know, it's torture. I, look, let's explain what it is. They are torturing you daily. There's not a day that goes by that, you know, you might stay in because you don't want to go out and deal with it. So that right there, becoming a shut-in, is a form of torture. But then they don't stop there. They put a microwave into your house. And I've had that. I had that guy across the street doing that to me with an infrared, this giant array on his roof that he would, you know, be able to track us in the house. But also it was a way of electronic harassment, plus cameras, plus um, those, uh, what are those uh, parabolic microphones where you can aim it in the house, you can hear everything being said. He had all that on us the whole time we were there. He was in the CIA. He was the drug czar of L.A. He would, he would bring, he was in charge of all the pharmaceutical drugs that would come into L.A. He was, um, uh, 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 when 9-11 happened, he was called uh, to a, some kind of thing, um, you know, with, with, with the president to deal with, you know, so very connected, high-end individual. And, you know, he liked us all right, but he couldn't help himself from doing all that you know, putting us on like a closed circuit TV and then, of course, the neighborhood being able to watch our comings and goings and then they can tie into the cameras and the, the city cameras and they can actually, you know, if they're connected, they can tie it all together so they can actually watch you in your house, watch you when you leave, watch where you drive, watch what stores you go into and then all those people are all waiting for you at the same time and they can just, they can do this and they, and they do do this to people and it, and it is a form of incredible torture. 
And they also send messages, voice to skull, like, you know, kill yourself, pervert yourself, you know, slime yourself, hurt yourself, cut yourself, you know, expose yourself. You know, all the things that would be opposite of what you'd want to do to have self-control, they, would, uh, they could send messages like that as well, and even God messages. I am the Lord. That's why you have to be careful, because if you hear it like too literally, uh, probably not the right thing. God doesn't speak in like that literal. It's subtle and sublime and, and, and kind of, you know, not as easy to detect a voice to skull thing. as like, you know, it's there. At one time, they had the Navy fight song on me, you know, and apparently, according to Dr. John Hall, they had this Navy fight song on a lot of people at the same time. And then that ended, and he, he laughed when I said, well, it's gone, it hasn't come back, I don't worry about it. He just laughed and said, no, it hasn't ended. And no, he's wrong, it had ended. You know, or maybe it's just that it goes on and I don't care. You know, or it goes on, but I've overcome it in a certain, to a certain level where it doesn't really work because I don't get triggered into fear and self-loathing and hiding and things like that. So um, what do I think of it? Uh, do I think they want a world without us? Yes. Obviously they do. But do they somehow need us at the same time? Yes, because I think they realize that without us, they wouldn't really exist or have a reason to exist because we're kind of their reason for existing. You know, watching us is, and, and, and controlling us and worrying about us and all that is what they do 24 hours a day. <laughs> so without us, they would, they would not really be able to, I suppose they could turn on each other. But that wouldn't be the same thing. You know, it would be uh, how many of, okay, well, let's ask the uh, Robert Plant Led Zeppelin question. How many are there that are on the big wide path of Satan versus the narrow path of Jesus? Many being a word that always leaves you guessing. Remember that album? I forget the name of the album, but I mean, they had a, they had a song with that lyric. And it's like, well, many doesn't confuse me, Mr. Dumbass Plant. You're like a plant. You're like a vegetable now. I hope it was all worth it, dude. But leave me alone. Write lyrics about how pathetic you are or your problems or your concerns about global warming or whatever, you know? Do something like that. I don't mind the guy, but, you know, every time they want to do choosing off kind of lyrics, they want to create a challenge or throw down a gauntlet or throw down a marker that, you know, you want to fight over this. Okay, well, let's go then. So he's going, you know, feeling all smug in his song that, you know, he knows, you know, what's going on, and but most people don't. And, um, you know, it's, it, you know, there's a sexual component, I suppose, but, you know, it's not really that. It's really, it's, it's, it's sex, it's, it's behavior, it's, it's having one of those beings in you so that you can be connected, so you can see what to do and when to do it in coordination with the rest of them. And that's really more to the point rather than a, an act of sex um, for an initiation rite or something like that. That doesn't get it done, you know. So he's saying there's many people in the world that can't see this, this wonderful being on the other side, you know, having access to that world, being able to be the Dave Matthews band, being able to, you know, who, who did a song. How, the reason I mentioned Dave Matthews is because he did a song. I don't think the, the, the lyric was talking about the other side. I don't know if it's called the other side, but basically the, 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 the gist of it is so much better on the other side, you know. I heard this play. I never owned the... The, 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 the guy gives me the creeps. I don't listen to any of his music. You know, I suppose he has a good band and everything, but what he writes about, I don't relate to. So I don't, I have, there's no point in listening to him going on about his girlfriend or his this or his that. I just don't care, you know. I don't care. I feel no connection with Matthews and never will. Do they play good? They play great. You know, they play awesome. But I have no connection there. 
But saying so much better on the other side, that I do know, and that's probably why there's no connection. He's talking about selling out, selling his soul, and going to the other side and going to Satan's. The other side means Satan's side. It doesn't mean the other side, uh, some amorphous side. The other side is a reference. Whenever they say it, break on through the other side, Jim Morrison and all that, that is about passing through to Satan's side, which means you have to have that demon in you that you were genetically altered to be that fit extension for that thing to be in you. And if that thing is in you, you're not in you. You're not on the other side, even if you, you know, are like a prostitute doing anything they want. It doesn't matter. You know, you can prostitute yourself all you want, but if the thing doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And now if, you know, like the Beatles song, Birthday, is the same thing. It's like birthday, you know, you... You, you, you take your place, you take your step into the, into the new world, and you uh, let them have you. You share yourself, whatever. But it's really more uh, this connection and this spirit and this thing that takes over, and then everything's okay because they take care of each other. No, they don't take care of each other. They're sniping each other. They're jealous of each other. They're competing with each other. They're not happy with each other. It's being orchestrated from another source, not God, but God has got still control of it, but it's, you know, obviously controlling it, but it's being the, the authority and the police, like the band, the police. The police, the all-seeing eye is the police. So there you go. It's an, the police was an Illuminati band. Bottom line. Well, why would you call yourself the police or, you know, another allusion to the police department? It's to what it's to handle this situation. That's what the police do. They handle this situation. I don't mean the literal police, but the police assigned by Satan to be police when they're young men and whatnot. They're they're part of the police force. And then as they get more responsibility, they become more of a honcho over the police, and they quit the police force. And it goes like that. It's a whole hierarchy. And they, they watch. They watch you. You're the thing they watch. <laughs> so, no, don't feel self-conscious about it. It's just, unfortunately, because, and let's call it what it is, folks. What you're experiencing is pure torture. I've learned to live with it, so it's not hard, but it's painful, you know, but let's not make it, it's being unaccepted, it's being, you know, being targeted, it's being, you know, um, ridiculed, it's being a lot of things, and all those things are pa very painful to human beings, and they do them, that's, and friends, this is why I refused um, to deal with them. Because I saw the way they behaved toward innocent people that meant them no harm. And I never wanted to be a part of anything like that because I just thought these are the most despicable, um, sorry excuses for, for, for anything I've ever seen. They're just disgusting. I spit on them. Because they torture innocent people who don't know what's going on and they laugh. They think it's funny. And many of these people wind up committing suicide because of them. Oh, no. My friends? Oh, no. No, I will never accept. And when I saw this in my youth, you know, obviously, um, there was only one response from any kind of normal person, which was to, you know, survive them, for one thing, because they will kill you, and, and, and find out what, you know, what, what gives with that. Because then they go on and do these charities and everyone says, oh, they're a great person. But then, then when they get in a ritual and they get to kill somebody, they make fun and degrade them and then stab them and dismember them and eat them and, and laugh at what a sorry loser they are. This is, um, this makes them, and so when I see world leaders and stuff, I automatically see them in that light. I just, all I have to do is cut to the uh, coven meeting when they have their sacrifices and all, that's all I have to do. Or, or they take glee over abortion or they, you know, they, 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 the snuff film industry, they have a private, I've kind of explained this years and years ago. There's a, there's a site called Able Danger that has, you know, this, just taken it more specifically. But I told this one guy that was a, an agent, he was like, you know, federal agent at one point, and I told him, what I know about is that just based on, you know, is that they, 
they'll have like a plane crash, you know, and then they'll have the video feed of what's going on in the plane as people are taking three, four minutes to die and freaking out and all that. And then they have an orgy and they'll play that film for the, or, and other films, things like that, um, because they can't get off unless they have violence and death and murder and blood and dismemberment. And that's what it takes for them to get off. And they, they, being a hive mind, the orgy is more the kind of sex they like. They have to have it with multiple people because it's a hive mind. You know, they're more like insects. So, yeah, I've had to contend with this. You know, I mean, imagine a lot of people when their kids commit suicide because they go, if this is the way the world is, I'm out of here. Because I'm a normal person. And so the normal person commits suicide. The abnormal people stay there and they run things. And they pretend to be like Bill and Hill Clinton, like they're married and stuff. And they have this whole other thing going on in multiplicity of uh, partners and people and, and feedings and rituals and covens and witchcraft and magic and sorcery and evil and war and pain and suffering and all that they cause in order to boost themselves and, and, and feel real good about how who they are. Yeah. Yeah, so when I see them, I, I know exactly what I'm looking at. When I see the pastor in the church, I know exactly what I'm looking at. When I see the people who seem to be hypnotized, that seem to have nothing to do with it, no, they are, their wills are engaged, they are not innocent victims, they're perpetrators, I know exactly. I'm looking at mean, vindictive, um, murderous, hostile spirits within these people, causing them to, you know, just like when kids torture a frog or an animal and they pull the legs off, they watch it suffer and they think it's really funny. These people are doing that. In the churches, in the universities, in the institutions, in politics, in Congress, everywhere. Remember the Franklin cover-up? That was a Republican deal. Yeah, Republicans with their boys. Why is sex with children the most important thing to them? That, that's like that and the death of, of uh, babies is like the two things they love. All the people who are connected. So all the people connected through rock and roll, I see as the same thing. I hold them responsible. God looks through my eyes, not the all-seeing eye. And when he sees them in their guitar centers and their the various places... He sees them and it gets registered. If they make a move, it goes up and out and shared with the kingdom of heaven. And then the reprisals come. Not for me doing, I don't have to do anything. I have to show up though and go in a dane, in, into harm's way and say, Lord, we're going, and we talk before we go in. Lord, we're going in and use my eyes, use my body, use my mind, use my tongue to speak whatever you want me to speak. And I've said some pretty outrageous things. I've gone and said non sequitur stuff, bing, 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 but it was all designed to trigger them, and I've watched them scurry like rats off a ship. I take no personal pleasure or displeasure. It's just a job I have to do on occasion for the Lord. The Lord is just letting them know that he's real, Yahweh is real, Jesus is real, the angelic realm is real, the kingdom of God is real, and he sees them. He sees all they do. He sees everything behind closed doors. He sees beyond the normal perversions to the dismembering perversions. You know, the kids torturing the animals. It goes back to that. It gets right into the heart of what their heart is. Sadistic. Or they can also be self-destructive and encourage everyone to commit suicide, like them, sex, drugs, rock and roll until they die, as a rebellion against God. But really, they're just playing, in the, they're just becoming a sacrifice for their God who controls them and doesn't give a crap, and they just ruin their lives and waste their lives, and you know, they win the Darwin Award for being so stupid. Keisha, Gaga, this, that, and the other. They like, well, they make money, they're not stupid there. But there's no going back because there just isn't a way back for some people. Um, 
Never, ever, ever, ever think for one moment that you're torturing you know, you're, you're, the torture that they've done to you and the suffering that you've had because of all this and the times you've fretted alone in your room not being able to, you know, show your face or the guilt and shame you felt because of them. All because of them. Every bit of it because of their feedback to you, the way they reflect to you. Your guilt and your shame, no, it's they're putting the guilt and shame on you. I know this for a fact, that they take glee when you feel ashamed of yourself because you don't really fit in. And they want to amplify that shame and that guilt. And then that's how they, that's, that's, and I think that's the worst torture of all, but it's not you. It's not because you were abused when you were a child. It's because they put it on you like a beam. You know, oh, he probably feels guilty now. <laughs> Look how shame, ashamed he is. <laughs> and they get off on it. The more ashamed you are of yourself, the more guilty you feel that you haven't measured up. You know, if you've done anything in this life, if you've gotten a paycheck or any done anything, you have beaten all the odds and God is proud of you because they, they according to them, you, you're to be blocked from everything. The Lord told me at an early age, like five years old, this is his world and to overcome it and to stand against it and that he will make it right. And I've held on to that belief ever since. To be patient and wait because he will turn the tables in one fell swoop and make it okay for people. Because I'm talking to millions of people right now that have this experience but don't know why they feel that way. I'm here to tell you the good news. It's not you. It's them putting it on you. It's you being tortured. Look, they also commit suicide. They, they also fail. in the, When they fail, they have to go commit Harry Carey, okay? When they fail, someone winds up dead. I mean, that's how it is with them. You saw Eyes Wide Shut. They tried to butcher the whole meaning of it by taking much of what Kubrick had in it out. I'd love to see those outtakes, but they did it because they didn't want to spill the beans that the elites, that, that oh, you know, you saw Nancy Pelosi there and, you know, you saw, uh, you know, you saw Bruce Springsteen there and his dumb wife and the rest of them. They were all there at the ritual with their masks on. Yeah, you saw Paul McCartney and you saw, you know, I hate to put it this way. Oh, yes, you, you know, maybe Franklin Graham was there too. All enjoying those names, I'm not necessarily, I have no proof of those names being in any of these things. I'm just saying, you know, the movie was about people that were honchos from government, the arts, this and that and the other thing, who were there that night. And a girl was sacrificed so that the Tom Cruise character could leave. They left that much in, but they kind of disconnected it all so you couldn't figure it out. And then Kubrick lost his life as a result of it. Yeah, they sort of Andrew Breitbart at him, you know, same thing. Breitbart lost his life. He was a martyr as well. Kubrick did get, he was the kind of guy that, that had to get the truth out. He, he did the whole project of The Shining, which I'm convinced of now, 100% convinced of, that he did The Shining in order to confess, you know, to, 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 to tell people about Apollo 11. That, you know, he had to, you know, Apollo 11 footage shows the footage was not taken on the moon. It was not. It was a uh, screen behind the screen, and you can tell where the line is. And you can see the line in 2001, Kubrick's movie, and you can see the same line. They used projection screens back then. You can see the same line in all the Apollo 11 footage, okay? And he told someone about Apollo 11. They got killed. That's another thing that happened. And he tried to explain about, you know, Eyes Wide Shut was really all about those people that were there that night. In other words, neighbors of Tom Cruise, you know, other people. The, the thing that Tom Cruise was going through and his wife, Nicole Kidman and whatnot, and in, in the movie, what they were going through, the jealousy and you know, sexual perversion things and whatnot, um, also showed me that they were, in a way, lambs. He was a doctor. See, there's people out there, a doctor, but he didn't have any idea 
that possibly his neighbors and people that he knew, people that he treated, the Sidney Pollock character, they were there with masks on. Girl was killed. They were having orgies. Any, any questions? Kubrick never did anything that was based on unreality. He was always trying to say something. And he was the world's greatest director. And he stands today as the greatest director of film that whoever lived, in my opinion. I mean, I guess everyone has an opinion, but in my opinion, I don't think it... And yes, I liked him because he was so obsessive about detail. And I think that's, that's the way you have to be when you're a filmmaker. And then when you finally analyze what happened with The Shining, it was pure genius. How he figured out to tell the story of Apollo 11 in that movie, The Shining, was, uh, was amazing. And, and then had, but Eyes Wide Shut, he just went too far. And I guess where, where they saw the footage, Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg re-edited the whole thing to botch it up because they can't do it literally. This happened to me when I, I did a film. And, you know, the same thing happened to me. They had to goof it up and make it funny and stupid. And the director was an idiot as well. You know, he was just no talent, just... But, but he was really smart about the world and he was really smart about these people. So we couldn't do this literal thing that I was doing. It had to be goofed up. And of course, I divorced myself from the project because, you know, that was not my original script. But he goofed it up to make it funny, but it's, there's enough in there. There's enough in there that it was like an early eyes wide shut. And there's a whole story with that. One day I'll tell it to you. It's, it's really... Quite fascinating, and um, I was almost going to do another film about the making of that film. I was thinking about it, but then I'm, you know, I'm kind of a sound man. I've got this. I've got, you know, an album to finish cutting, and and uh, it's kind of like I've dedicated myself to sound, you know, and and I, you know, gosh, I really love movies, you know, and I really like writing screenplays, or I used to anyway. I wrote about 30 of them, or maybe more, and novels and things. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but it just kind of like, you know, with a, with a record, you know, with, 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 with uh, you know, um, music editing and producing and things, you know, I can help people, you know, and it, you get a result. It's like with a movie, you don't know if it's gonna get funded, the funding for the movie I just mentioned kind of briefly was came from the Yakuza, the Yakuza. Yeah, it came from the mafia in Japan. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, there's a lot of stories. There's a lot of stories that, you know, I kept to myself just because I, I was still sorting them out myself, you know, how um, a producer of this movie was handling me, you know, the, like I was sort of on the Truman Show and this whole movie thing that was happening was part of the, the thing of handling me and changing the script was of important so that it wouldn't be so literal like Eyes Wide Shut. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that was all coming from orders from other people, and there was all that kind of thing. And it, there's many levels to this. But the main thing you need to understand is that, um, of course, it was a... Uh, artificial environment. Any, you know, environment I walked into would be made artificial if there is this dichotomy between the people in Satan who have on the other side, which is most people in LA, I guess, versus people that are just wandering around that don't know anything about all this and don't really consider it, and there's a lot of those. But those are handled by the, the group who is connected, handles those and makes sure they're tortured and feel ashamed and guilty. And a lot of times, you know, lamb people, you know, lambs to the slaughter, you know, the people are being handled and controlled. A lot of times they're fat. They're, you know, they don't, I mean, you know, they're not fit. They're, they're, they, they have trouble with drugs and alcohol and things because they feel tortured. So they're self-medicating with food or with alcohol. or So, you know, there's those kind of problems that come from when you're tortured. If you don't really understand it, you may be self-destructive. And it doesn't mean you're not a lamb of God. It means they are hurting you. And, but you don't realize it because you can't admit to yourself that anything that organized could possibly exist. It just defies logic. And I'm telling you that you have to add the supernatural component to it as a way of making it 
plausible. Which is hard for some people to see. For most people to see. And impossible for them in the hive. They can't see it at all. That gives you an advantage. You are able to stick it to them, but you can't do anything outside God's will. So sometimes you just leave and let them win. Yep. I know that's just something that the Christian has to learn. It's not important. You know, you, you are more in, have the signature of the martyr than you do of the, the warrior in a way. But that's not always true. Sometimes you're the warrior. But all things need to be done in concert with the Lord. And the Lord is not going to have you do something like live by the sword because you will end up dying by the sword. He wants to preserve you. So when they do stuff to you, just realize your eyes are a movie camera into the kingdom, and they're all seeing what they do. He that's in you, the Bible says, is greater than he that's in the world. You need not fear. God will make a table, Psalm 23, in the midst of your enemies, will make you a table that you'll be able to sit in the middle of all this stuff going on, in other words. If you go to any restaurant, you're sitting in the midst of your enemies. Okay. So he'll make you a table there, and you'll be able to eat and, and, and drink in peace and almost feel like it's a normal world, but then no worries. By the end of the day, you'll be tortured again. You need to learn where the torture is coming from. It's not necessarily coming from them who want to torture you. It's coming from that which is in them that's connected to this hive that is this whole program in a higher dimension that's coming through them to you. You're being tortured by Satan and his minions, in other words. It's, you're being tortured supernaturally. And so they'll come around laughing, go, you know, all this could end. It's just... You know, if you just come along and uh, go along to get along, uh, you know, when in Rome, it could all end. You know, the torture is, here's what I was told when I was a kid when I was like 18. It's your fault, not mine, not the world's. That's your fault if you're tortured. Really? Well, what should I do about it? Of course, they'll never give you a straight answer. It's something you should just know. Ah. And if you don't know, it means you're not meant for them. And so they, the good people of the world, <laughs> they actually believe that everybody could be connected to them. They don't believe that there's a different species. But you are a different species than them. You are literally genetically, DNA, different. You are not them, they are not you. You look both like humans, but not the same. Because, and the proof of that is, answer this question, was it virtue on your part that made you not give him? Was it, was it strength? Superhuman strength that you resisted? No. Most of you wanted to be liked and popular, didn't you? You wanted to get along with people, didn't you? You wanted to have Thanksgiving dinner with friends, didn't you? You wanted to be accepted. And you were weak, and when your feelings were hurt, you cried, right? So you had all the qualifications. They had those qualifications, passed through just fine. You, on the other hand, hit the wall. And it wasn't your fault that they don't like you. It wasn't your fault that you didn't pass through. You did what they told you to do. You're weak, you just wanted friends. You don't have strength of your own to stand up against the whole world. You, weren't, you didn't think it was about that anyway. It wasn't your fault, but you're blamed and given guilt and shame as if it is your fault and told by them, it's your fault if you suffer, not mine, while I heap it on you, while I attack you, while, while I do it in a way that you'll never think it's coming from me because we have this whole network around you, surrounding you, that you don't even know anything about. So we could just... We could just do death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I'm not. It's your fault. It's your fault. Uh huh. And just hoping you make a move like you go shoot somebody, do something, react to it. And they're just waiting for that. And that you cannot do. That you cannot do. The Lord forbids it. He says, put that away. You, you live by the sword, you die by it. You do not go that way because they're, they'll, you will lose. Plenty of people have. 
they get gamed or gang stalked and they go shoot everybody. You know what I mean? Then it's the psycho killer. Then you never hear from them again. You know, it's just that that's the, we're not fighting a battle of flesh and blood. We're not fighting. We're fighting Ephesians. You know, go read your Ephesians 6. We're fighting. Uh, you know, you have to put the full armor of God on. And, and, your, you know, and your sword is the word of God and the spirit of God. And you have to put that on and go into battle. And, you know, you're as gentle as a dove, as wise as a serpent. And you, you're in there and you just yield to God in that moment. And you're connected to him. And you will speak to them if... if if God chooses, and you'll say things to them that will trigger them into the knowledge that they can't win. Evil and bullying, which is what they are, they're, they're all bullies, that's right, they're bullies. You don't see it when they're on TV, you don't see it when they're giving political speeches, you don't see it when they're up there as rock stars. Believe me, I've seen the snake pit in Hollywood. They're bullies. Only the bullies get to be the rock star. You know, they, uh, only these guys ascend. Bullies, mean. Uh, they had, they had to learn how to be that. The toughest one in the snake pit is the one that wins, that gets to be, the the star. Anything less, and so th- what they had to do for stardom, what you see on the screen isn't who they are inside. And then people are amazed to see a Joan Crawford to be such a mean person. Now my mother patterned herself after Joan Crawford, and admired her greatly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mommy dearest. Yes, it, it was funny. She had clippings of Joan Crawford. It was, I just thought, are you crazy? You think this woman was, she thought Joan Crawford, the way she treated her kids was excellent. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up, folks. You cannot make this stuff up. It's, the whole world is just a story in a bunch of stories. It's all made by God. It's all supernatural. Everything that happens every day is is just the most bizarre stuff that, again, you can't make up. It makes no sense logically until you factor in the things of the spirit and supernatural, uh, that it's all fraught with supernatural powers and events. But most people are veiled so they can't see all the movements of all the stuff going on. Uh, you people that are gang stalked, you know, the only solution you have is Jesus Christ, the Lord. And in him, you'll find peace. I have peace. They want, you know, but it doesn't mean that I haven't felt ashamed and guilty for a long time. Um, my whole life pretty much has been filled with shame and guilt. You know, a shame that I, you know, um, they wanted me to feel ashamed that I, you know, that I was a freak and whatnot. That I was different. And they wanted to make sure that I felt shame and guilt and self-torture and self-loathing and, um, and, 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 and self-hurting over those things. And they took a lot of glee and pleasure out of it. It's, it's true. They got a lot of energy and, and, and happiness from my being hurt. I've seen that every day of my life, pretty much. But the difference now, I guess, in my older age is... Um, I'm okay with it. I just wish I had known God earlier had been speaking to me about these things, about what scripture says about it. Back when I was, you know, preteen, let's say. I wish I had known more about it then. You know, but then again, a lot of the people that are bullied in the playground and commit suicide and all that kind of stuff are bullied in the workplace or set up in some way and commit suicide and all that. You know, they didn't have the advantage of knowing scripture either at that time or knowing why all this was going on. They just felt it was their fault and it was them and they were a failure and they're ashamed. And so they end their life. And then the people around them, I kid you not, they all high five each other. I swear I've my own mother did this when my brother died. When my brother died at the hands of this witch, it's a long story. When we were into like a limo type of thing and then, you know, at the funeral down in uh, Orange County somewhere or San Diego County. And, um, and then when she got back in the limo, you know, she, she uh, got all the tears out of her eyes and she looked over 
And she goes, how did I do? You know, meaning, were her tears convincing? And she started laughing. You know, it was like, she was so excited. That was like good riddance. Was, her goal was to kill off uh, my brother, and she did. And uh, no, she never grieved. She started laughing. And, uh, and, and then she felt that I should grieve. But I was so traumatized by the whole thing that happened, and it took me years and years and years to be able to figure out what really happened. And it was, you know, a hit. It was basically murder, you know, and... Um, And she loved it. And I didn't even know that there was a rhyme or reason to it other than, you know, that was the spirit. It, you know, it, I've seen so much evil like that. I've seen so much evil that there's almost no way, unless you're one of them, reprobate and gone and possessed, that you could handle it. But somehow I've understood it from the standpoint of the Lord to where I have accepted that that's the way it is. But I'm not going to give them a, you know, um, again, you know, this guy telling me that I'm, you know, me having a vendetta. I have no vendetta. But the Lord does. Yeah, and he will strike down these people in these churches. He'll kill them all, along with lots of other people. And, and he'll put it all down when he decides to do it, when it's the perfect time of justice, to avenge the prophets and the saints and his people from the beginning of time who've suffered in the same way. Through no fault of their own, they've suffered. And he will avenge all that. And on that day, your honchos of Babylon, and that's the fall of Babylon, correct, in the Bible. It's Revelation 18 and 19. That's the fall of Babylon. And, and the, the, But the point is, it's... He says to his people, I want you to rejoice and dance and sing. Because, you see, and he's also talking to all the ones who have been slain. So they're all, you know, they're all, you know, in the process of resurrection and they're going to be around as well. You know what I mean? And so, so basically, um, they didn't go anywhere. He's telling them wherever dimension they're in to dance and sing as well. And um, rejoice, all you saints who were, who were slain. In other words, all you people that died at the hands of these people. God has now avenged you on her. When Babylon is gone, it means gone and never come back. It means the world system of Satan is finally broken and will never be back. All that is in the future once Babylon goes is the kingdom of God upon the earth. That's all there is. And then a new dimension, a new heaven, a new earth. There is nothing else going on. That's all. The, the fall of Babylon marks the end, the end of Satan's reign on earth. I think we all agree on that, right? I mean, at least that's one point of scripture we can agree on. Okay, so, so the fall of Babylon is a big deal because it is the thing for thousands of years that had the grip. And then finally, you know, Babylon was manifested in the United States. But before the United States, there's Europe. There's, you know, the system was forming. But, you know, it, I suppose the mystery is the, 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 um, the um, you know, Wall Street mystery, the, uh, the, the center of commerce. The mystery is the spiritual dimension, but the mystery can be unco uncoded um, by the confluence and intersection and connection of secret societies and secret occultic organizations around the world that believe they are responsible for Washington, D.C. and the rest of it, how it ended up being culminated there. But then, of course, their new Atlantis cannot be formed unless that's torn down along with... So for them, they believe the fall of Babylon is the beginning of their kingdom. We believe the fall of Babylon is the beginning of our kingdom, we know that most of the churches are Babylon, and that's why the Lord in Revelation 18 very emphatically says, well, let me just read it to you. I mean, this is, you know, if there's anybody in, in, in the church system that's listening, 
I hope that you really understand you're in the mystery Babylon system, not the church system. And I hope you understand this. I mean, the truth doesn't change. You can get it from me or get it from any number of people online who are, you know, who are for real. And then there's a bunch of shills out there, too. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. If, but but in 18... Um, yeah. Rejoice, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Um, I just got to find the... Uh, yeah, it's vengeance. The whole Bible, the final big third act of the Bible, if you will, the final act, is the destruction of Babylon and, and God. It ends with God's vengeance. And then the denouement would be the new heaven and new earth and you know the, the new Jerusalem and the new um, Jesus. Another name for Jesus is I make all things new. If you could make that into one name, that's, that's another uh, mystery of Christ, signature of his name. Another name for him is something we can't utter really as a name. It means I make all things new. Well, anyway, in Revelation 18, uh, verse 4, it says, okay, earlier, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, meaning all nations and all people, pretty much, will bow down to this, which is too bad for them at this point in history. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, all the kings, the president, the presidents, and kings are kings, right? And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through her abundance of her delicacies. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you not be partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, which in the reverse means... You know, the other, the, the implying that if you are not coming out of the system, that doesn't mean don't put gasoline in your car. That doesn't mean um, don't, you know, pass the test at school. It means the connection of the hive. Come out of her, meaning you have to disconnect from the mystery Babylon, which is the hive mind, the all-seeing eye and all that. You have to disconnect. Well, you, the secret to that is you can't disconnect because it's a supernatural act that got you connected in the first place. To disconnect, you would have to have Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can do it. The blood of Christ disconnects you from that and connects you to him. You're born again. In being born again, legally, you have come out of her, but only being born again will get you that legal status of having come out of her so that you won't be visited with the plagues because, you know, he comes with a vesture dipped in blood that says Lord of Lord and King of Kings with a sword to smite everyone. I mean, the whole world gets killed pretty much and the birds feast on the flesh of the great feast of the Lord, God. And that vengeance goes on to destroy every single person, kind of like the flood, only this is with fire and brimstone and, and swords and blood. The, um, all those who have you know, fornicated with the whore means initiated into the world system. And so all those who fornicated with her, all those who are part of that system will be uh, visited upon by these plagues and will be ended and overturned. And then comes the new, uh, you know, the, the new kingdom or the kingdom that was already there to be established upon the earth. And the way that it was for thousands of years suddenly ends, replaced by the actual kingdom of God upon the earth, which never goes back and then time ends with the new Jerusalem and the new heaven and new earth. Time and space ends as we know it. So that's the end of the story. 
It, a Babylon is allowed to flourish. Mystery Babylon, the, it's a mystery because it's flourished from the garden on, because it's, 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 it's influences, its grip is throughout. It has held grip every nation. Mystery Babylon is not just America, but a lot of people think America is the horror or Babylon the Great. And from the architecture of Washington, D.C., it pretty much, it was, well, obviously, it screams that I am the horror. I am, I am of Satan. A power of the United States, the most powerful military in the world, comes from Satan, not the people. The people are, the people are completely ignored, as you saw and as you've seen, and as you saw with the collapse of the, uh, the legal, uh, political, and uh, commercial system of the United States collapsed. But it's with you know the final collapse and the market collapse and all that that's soon to come um, will be an event so powerful that it will be... Uh, similar to, gosh, in, in a half hour, it's over, right? When the market tanks, you know, within a half hour, it can all be over. And that's the only place I know within a half hour it could be over would be the New York Stock Exchange. And we're leading right up to, some experts are calling, and these are people who've been right every time, for a massive collapse, the destruction of the market, and unemployment immediately within a day going down, you know, to like, um, you know, 60% of the population in one day. That's Armageddon. That's the end of the end of the end. Then after that, of course, it, it continues. But along with this, there are, you know, plagues, diseases, uh, things from the sky, um, all kinds of things. But in, in general, it's all leading to the vengeance against the people who through Satan waxed rich and powerful and made their nations and civilizations and ways of life through Satan practicing in secret the satanic rituals that are disgusting and immoral and criminal and, and make them into inhuman beings, inhuman. God is just taking out the garbage. I mean, you know, by killing all these people, all he's doing is cleansing the way. I mean, in the I mean, it is vengeance, but it, it's also you can't redeem them. You know what I'm saying? Most souls that have gone that far uh, are not redeemable. They're not even there to be redeemed. The people like you see on TV, the kings and the queens, and the, you know, there's just like nobody home. You know, take a look at Prince Charles. Is there anybody home? Really? There's somebody there? A thinking? Is there some thinking going on? Uh, you know, I've seen this over and over with people getting aged and, and uh, harboring their secrets. And, you know, the affiliation with the world, being twice dead, being um, satanically vetted, being the movers and shakers, the only thing I've seen at the end of their lives or as they get older is tragedy. But they don't, with the exception of my own grandfather, you know, who, who was redeemed, you know, because he made an earnest effort to, to, to rectify himself in the world, gave away most of his money to charity and, and you know, just, just tried to do everything he could to get right with God in the end because he realized he was, he was very guilty and ashamed of, of what he had done. He realized he'd been duped by money, that money and social position were the almighty thing. And in the end of his life, he didn't believe that at all. He was uh, a good man, you know, uh, a great man, you know, who can... It takes a great man who can admit a mistake, having a lifelong work and going, oh my God, what have I done? It takes a great man to be able to repent after a whole life of investing in something. He was a great man. The people he worked with, on the other hand, they didn't do that. They doubled down on it at the end. They doubled down on their way, figuring that's the right way. Now, the Proverbs are very clear. There's a way that seems right to a man. And most people think, well, when in Rome, and you know, then we'll do the best we can with having church. And you know, that'll help mollify our guilt. And then we, you know, we got to do what we got to do. You know, the, we got to grow up and not be Pollyanna about the world. You know, it's a brutal place. And you know, this is the way we make, this is the only way we can make a living and make a life for our children. So who are you to tell me that you know, this is illegal? Fuck you. Or, you know, excuse my friend. Oh, there goes this. <laughs> this podcast won't wind up on the, the radio, but I don't care. That's what they would say. 
Why even try to pull our punches about it? So, no, with me, it was like early on in life, I saw how evil they were and I was traumatized so that the more they traumatized me and were mean and did things, the more that I resisted, not by strength, but through multiple personalities and, and being psychologically shattered and, and traumatized, it, I became unreachable. And then God puts you back together and causes you integration. But you can't integrate until you can handle. You can't integrate multiple. Per Look, on their side, they all have multiple personalities. Pretty much, I have never met anyone that wasn't at least double-minded, where they could switch into something else and then switch back. At least I saw that. With That's 100% of them. 100%. There is no exception. On the other hand, people of Christ, people in Yahweh, they become whole, but not until they can handle it emotionally. Can you handle how evil this world is? Because it is really, really evil. Can you handle the fact that it's mostly bad and it's not in a state of equilibrium, which would be good and bad working together, light and dark working together. It's mainly evil with a sliver of light kept that way um, uh, uh, mechanically you know not kept that way through natural processes not allowed to have natural so people conform to that because that's what's paying those people will be you know not just cut off but destroyed every last one of them whether it's you know in death whether it's by plagues and death to come here soon but whether it's their souls and total destruction upon death but they've said in their hearts, this is all there is. I'm going to sow to this. This is all that counts. I have to be mean to these kind of like kick those kind of dogs around the lambs because that's what gives me my position. But it's okay because it's better them than me. These people are slated for absolute vengeance of the Lord. Not only them, but all their children to the point where they will make their children extinct so their line and their seed would be cut off so that their seed will not exist on the earth when other seed will succeed, theirs will not. They will be as if they never were in the first place. That everything they did, thought, said, moot. It's nothing. It was just a fiction. Nobody cares. Nobody remembers. No one wants to remember. They don't exist. And that's the fate of the worlders, of the worlders who, you know, it's not just the feast of the Lord and, you know, it's not just breaking the system down, destroying all the buildings and killing everybody. That's not it. It's the inner soul that gets destroyed. And it has already been destroyed when you see the blank eyes and you see them able to just, like robots, slide in and out. They're gone, baby. They're gone. You do not pray for those. I mean, you pray they stay out of your way. But you got to pray for the people that, you know, God says, this one's still alive. You need to help get him out of there. The book of Jude says with fear, you get to, you know, f like this podcast would be like book of Jude inspired. Through fear, we get him out. If you're hanging on by a thread, you're still in that vessel. You're still in that body. There's a piece of you still in there. You still have a chance, but wait much longer. You won't be there to choose you'll be destroyed. And furthermore, there is a punishment. Everlasting contempt is the punishment to every one of these souls because they're going to exist after death as being punished and put in shame for all to see. Those who were proud, who were cool, who were successful, who were who were just connected and just made things. The world was their oyster, yeah. Uh -huh. These um, won't get the worst of it. The worst of it is reserved for the pastors of the Babylon church that they put the name of Jesus Christ on. That will be the worst of all punishments. 
And um, they, they will not only be as if they've never been upon the earth, but they actually, in their arrogance and narcissism, and I've heard them, and some of these guys, are just, you know, their wives are Jezebels, and they control them. They get up there on the, right, they have, they're compromised, right? Probably pedophilia, probably murder or something. And so the, the wife is like the puppet master. I, I've seen this every single church I've been to. Same thing, Jezebel wife behind every pastor, controlling him because he's compromised. So, but, but she totally controls him and, uh, you know, and is part of the sisterhood. And the sisterhood controls all these guys. <laughs> you go to Abel Danger, I think you can see that, you know, he, he's doing it from a secular way. But from a secular perspective, they try to explain about all the world leaders being compromised. They all, but that's true. They all have to have something on them. And it's always the, the sisterhood, you know, that are controlling them. It's not, it's not like the men rule the world at all. It's, their, it's, the, it's the women that do. But they, very, they stay behind the scenes and they make it look like they're just little light little women. But no, it's their sisterhood. They, they know they're compromised. And they know that that card could be called. I think that's the reason Romney had to stand down in the election because he's compromised. He, he couldn't, you know, it was already decided that Obama would have a second term back months and months ago is when I said it. I, I knew he was going to have a second term. I had hoped and tried to get people to vote against it, but that was my duty for America in the last breath. And now for me, the Lord showed me America's gone, so I don't have to do that again. But I did my you know, I was proud of having, you know, stood up for uh, capitalism and free markets and free people and free religion and things like that. I was happy with myself for having stood for something, you know. Um, but uh, Romney, after the first debate, he was told to stand down. And, um, you know, the, 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 the system told him to, the same system that Obama's part of. It was decided Obama would take the victory, so he had to stand down in the debates. You saw that, a noticeable difference. And on his ads, he never addressed any of the uh, uh, attack ads of, uh, uh, of Obama because he was slated, he was told he was going to lose. I think he still thought he could win as, as the crowds got bigger and bigger, but, you know, basically it was kind of like, had he, had he um, really been the winner, um, chosen there be to be a change he would have uh uh gone with the first debate style and he would have answered Benghazi he would have done a lot different things differently he it was almost identical to the race John Kerry ran against George Bush in 2004 when I told you at the skull and bones meeting because I I I don't know where I found that out but that summer it was decided that Bush would have a second term and that Kerry would you know stand down so Kerry ran a half-ass campaign and had to stand down, but it was already decided that Bush would continue. And a lot of times they'll decide these things at something like the Bohemian Grove, not the Scumbo, but Bohemian Grove in the summertime. You know, yeah, when they get together, they make decisions like that. Well, it was decided many months earlier that Obama would have a second term. And then, um, you know, you might have had, it may have been more subtle control, but... Romney can be controlled and, you know, he's not going to go against the grain and whatever the outcome has been decided by the same secret society he's a piece of, the same as Obama is. So they're both in the same club in a sense. And and so it was worked out and it went according to plan and there was no hitch with the election. There was no, just like with Kerry, there was no recount. There was no, it just went and he was declared the win and that was the end of it. But at that point, it's also coded Barack Hussein Obama is coded in like in the book of Daniel when you see the various kings and leaders that were before there's also a code in there for the one today and that one in, in Daniel 7 Daniel 8 Daniel 11 uh, is Barack Hussein Obama which is also Revelation 18 the destruction of Babylon that that's his signature that's his purpose to to destroy wonderfully and destroy many and, um, you know, and the abomination of desolation prophecy may even pertain because I know that I, I got this in the spirit very strongly. He's vying for Jerusalem. He wants Jerusalem for himself. 
And that puts him in a whole different category if that's true. You know, I'm not saying it's literally true. This is something I get in the spirit very strongly. There's a third day I've been talking about it. He wants Jerusalem. He's going away now into Myanmar and Thailand and different places in Asia while, uh, while Israel burns and while Gaza burns, while this war is going on. But it's because he can't take a side. Because his side is really, his general is not Petraeus. His general is Morsi, the head of the Muslim Brotherhood. He put him in. He overthrew Egypt and got Egypt. He's already overthrown Egypt, prophesied in Daniel. And he's got that. He's got his number one man there, Morsi. So he's the guy in Egypt that Obama has on the ground. So he's amassing his people, Obama that is, to make a run for Jerusalem. And, you know, those of you who keep waiting for some kind of thing in the future, uh, it looks like history is playing out right now. <laughs> you know, um, we'll see what he does. Uh, look, if he is that guy and it's not some Mahdi guy coming from the Middle East or Turkey or somewhere, you know, uh, you'll know it, the whole world. We, all the, the real people of the spirit would know that. If there's going to be a first run at Jerusalem and another run at you know destruction of Babylon after Babylon's been destroyed and the whole financial system is destroyed globally and they erect a new one and it's all, you have to be chipped in order to buy and sell. If that happens under Obama's watch and the elections are canceled because of the chaos, blah, blah, blah. If all that happens, I think you're going to have to give it up because if you're waiting for another set of events like that, it couldn't be because it's already happened. See, you couldn't destroy Babylon twice. So we're going to watch and see. But Babylon is as much, you know, it's, it's the world system, you know, headquartered in, uh, you know, the obelisk of the U.S. and the, and the, and the architecture and the gargoyles and the, and the pentagram and the, and the, the whole kind of thing, that um, the reflecting pool, and the, um, it all has that signature on it of the Wizard of Oz or the Kingdom of Satan or whatever. And it's, it is what it is. It's also in Israel. It's also in Belgium. It's also in, you know, all of Europe. It's also in the Netherlands. So it's all connected, you know. It's all connected. A lot of people think uh, America, but you can't separate America from Europe or Asia. It's all, but you could say it is the center of commerce, and that would be enough to... Uh, but I think the mystery of Babylon is the two Babylons and the, um, you know, the earlier one being in Iraq and the later one being here. Uh, and I think the, the fall of America certainly is the beginning of the, of, 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 the, of the countdown to an end because the center of it all would have to be Washington, D.C. in the sense of... Uh, but that would be, in history, a recent center. It wouldn't be like Rome or something, right? wouldn't be Rome. Rome also has a great obelisk at the Vatican. In St. Peter's uh, Square or Basilica or whatever, there's a huge obelisk. And the architecture is exactly the same thing as Washington, D.C. But no, the Vatican doesn't have the most powerful military in the world. You know? So it's, it's, it's hard to get a handle on exactly nation-wise. Um, the Vatican has done plenty. I mean, they've done enough for, for to serving Satan. If they don't serve Satan, I, they, they don't serve God. <laughs> I mean, I know there's a lot of Catholics who are very devout, and, and my grandmother was like that. She used Catholicism to be able to justify her evil deeds in the world, and I know there's a lot of people doing that, but I've, I don't know. I've, uh, most of the Catholic... Uh, Communities in, in South America, in certain places, they worship Mary, not not Jesus. It's Mary. So it's the old Queen of Heaven Goddess religion. So I mean, you know, and the priests all allow it because, you know, they're a bunch of drunk pedophiles. They're drunk because they can't handle their own guilt and shame. You know, it's bad. I mean, you know, everywhere you look, it's it's definitely bad. There's definitely 
not a lot of hope. There's about a 10% sliver of light and 90% darkness. I used to think 80-20, but now it's 90-10. Maybe it has to get all the way to like 1% of light, 99% darkness in order for it to, for there to be a flip. Don't forget the book of Isaiah talking about the earth wobbling around like a drunkard, like a pole shift. Don't, don't forget about a lot of these earth changes that are slated to come. Like you, I'll, I'll just put it this way. God will allow you to see the fear in their eyes before it's over. You will see them like deer in the headlights one day. You saw that with a couple of the people on Wall Street with the financial collapse about to happen because of the illegal derivatives, which no one should be trading in, and which they still are trading in, since the Glass-Steagall Act, they were able to start gambling. You saw that guy, the Bushes guy, I forget his name now. You saw him, you saw him as a deer in the headlights. That was just, there'll be a day when they're all like that. When, you know, oh my God, what have we done? It's all over. And they'll, they'll have that realization. You'll see it. You'll know it. And you on that day will be confident, exalted, praising the Lord Jesus, spreading the gospel news, going to anyone you can, including these people, and saying, you know, look, obviously your way failed. To me, when I see the pain and suffering of brothers and sisters and shame and guilt and all the crippling, you know, the cruelly crippled people, you know, that are just basically limping through life, just trying to, who've been tortured every single day of their lives because of these people. I just have to remind myself of that when I'm in the presence of anybody who's, you know, elite in any way. If I ever am, I'm, I'm not. But I mean, if I ever would be, I've got to keep that in mind. That, you know, they, by proxy or indirectly, but still... Uh, attributed to them, caused my friend to suffer and die. Caused my brother to suffer and die. Caused my friends in high school, many of them, to suffer and die. These very people, um, when I saw that Romney had been mean in high school, you know, I was like, wow, that certainly brings back memories, doesn't it? Yeah. So when I see this whole thing going on, I know I, w I voted for Romney. You know, I voted for capitalism. I voted for free markets. I didn't vote for the man necessarily. But I won't be, you know, that's the last vote I will cast because I was told not to anymore. But I did my job there and, and the result is God said no. But at least I, you know, was there to give it a try and, and do my best, but the people would not listen to what we had to say. What they like, you'll see, they'll, they'll be on the news media, you'll be watching TV, and they'll all be like deer in the headlights, their eyes bugging out. They'll go, oh, 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 oh. They'll be like that. Well, you're very calm, and you're going, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry it was torture. I'm sorry it hurts. I'm sorry it hurts. It really hurts. It, it, only God could have had you live as long as you did with that much pain. Most of my friends didn't make it. They're dead. The others that did make it, some of them wound up, you know, derelicts on the street, I guess, you know. Others have kind of hidden out, you know, trying to hide away from the world, which you cannot do. You can't hide from them. You have to go sit there in the midst of them. And when they start getting perturbed, you get louder and louder and louder. You have every right to be here and louder. And you have every much right to be here. You're a child of God and they are not allowed to bully you out. But yes, the bullies, you know, to this point have won and you bow down to bullies to get your position and then, you know, the... Toughest one in the snake pit gets to be your actor on the screen. And yeah, that's the way it's been. You pure hearts out there, you never had a chance. You know, they ridicule you because your mind just won't, you know, you just can't slide. You just like, you, black is black, white is white, and you're just, you're just screwed. 
but go to Jesus because there is a day coming where his people will be restored. And that restoration has already begun to take place. And you will, you know, I can't take the pain away. and Maybe God won't take my pain away. You know, but he certainly has made my life wonderful. But I feel the pain too. So perhaps it's Dickinsonian, like the best of times and the worst of times. I feel the best in a way, but I feel the worst because there's suffering and death to come for all of us. Still, that's no reason to sell out and be mean and cruel. You know, uh, the world rewards that in order to be a honcho or a leader. Obama's Eric is just mean. He's plain out mean. Very mean. His wife is very mean. The sisterhood behind the whole thing is mean. They, they've, you know, well, they're black. I don't know what it is, you know, mean. The, the black racists have a whole thing about the white person's a devil and they won't be happy till they, they kill every last one of us. And, you know, if you're white. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, and that's, that's some of the circles Obama was in that they have that kind of theology. What can I, there's nothing I can do about it, you know. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a mean, cruel world and, and these people have preyed upon others. And they started getting addicted to getting that pomp, you see. But they couldn't do that unless they were in the system and learned to do it from others that they saw doing it. And then, so they came up through the ranks. So when they look at someone like you, they just start laughing. Yeah, that's all. You're pathetic. You're hilarious. You're a joke to them. They'll pat you on the head, give you a little kiss, and tell you to, you know, don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Yes. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> because when you finally see the whole world the way they see it, you're going to feel like a fool or you're going to feel glad. Myself, um, when I look at the whole wonderful world that they enjoy, I don't feel like a fool because I have evidence and people who have suffered and died close to me at their hand, uh, you know, and all that participate in the system are in a sense guilty. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, when I put those things together, that was kind of the end of my trying to fit in at that point. That was, you know, at that point I was like, okay, well, you know, no, I don't want to, to be like that because that, did so much damage to me and my friends and you know I, I don't want to be cruel so it was kind of like a philosophical thing you know if you have to become someone else in order to be successful you know then then where are you once the success comes the answer is you're not there enjoying it it's someone else something else that's inside you that's enjoying it you're not there. People can't be that mean unless their conscience goes. And the only way that can happen is with the right demonic force within you. You know, the right spirit within you can make you become like that. You know, cold, ruthless, Machiavellian, and, you know, whatever. And uh, the world has been a brutal place, you know. So those are the people that have succeeded from time immemorial. And the lambs have been just what they are, lambs to the slaughter from the beginning of time. The whole world is based on the slaughter of innocence. That just can't be. The idea of intentionally hurting people, that just can't be. The idea of driving people to suicide and laughing about it, that just can't be. That just can't exist, folks. It can't. God cannot allow that to exist. He cannot. And those of you survivors who've been to the brunt of all this and you're still around, God bless you. It's only through his strength that you're able to be around. Well, you wouldn't be here unless, you know, you're going to have to see him put it right. And you know, I know a lot of these lamb kind of people, they would even pray for God to stave it off because they don't want to see you hurt out there. They hold no ill will against you who've hurt them so badly. 
and crippled them to the point of not being able to actually function in life. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. Your system is going to come down one day, you along with it. And on that day, God will do it. No, no, no army, no man, no man, no, not, no, not the lambs. They're not going to do anything. They, they pray for other people. They, when you hurt them, they'll pray for you. That's how they are. You'd never do that for them. When they get thrown out of the churches for, um, because they offend some people, they will pray for the pastor. They will pray for the congregation to not go to hell. I'm just simply here to tell you that they are going to hell. And I guarantee it. Before it's over, they'll be consciously them knowing themselves and burning. The worst punishments reserved for the church system of Babylon with the name Jesus Christ on the front with a cross on it, a steeple. The worst punishment would be that those churches did not separate their flocks from Babylon, that they initiated them into the other side. This, I cannot even imagine a higher crime than that. Bid you shalom. See you next time.